Hi. I wanted to um, explain dielectric strength. So this is the second part of dielectrics and capacitors. So um, I told you I'd come back and, and explain dielectric strength. Okay, so um, if you remember the benefits of adding a dielectric to a capacitor, there were three benefits. And um, one was just, it was it's a good way to, it's a nice, easy way to keep the plates from touching because you're putting like a some wax or some paper or some other insulator in between the two plates so they are they're much less apt to touch and, and short out um, and then it also increases the capacitance so whenever you add a, a dielectric to a capacitor you're going to increase the capacitance because the k value the the um, or the kappa value the dielectric constant is all of any insulating material is bigger than one. So it's always going to be increasing the capacitance. And that was, that was the previous video that I explained why that happens, why it increases the capacitance. But this one right here, I'm coming back to this. So the dielectrics um, increase the maximum potential that you can place on a capacitor before it starts to um, break down, it, the dia before um, it starts to conduct electricity. So, um, so let's take a look at that. So, um, uh, let me go, let me, I'll come back to this. So, remember we had, in the last video we were talking about that um, a dielectric has um, an atom with the positive charge at the center here and the uh, um, electrons are in the outer, on the outer parts of the atom. Very simplified view of the atom. And, um, if we put a field in here, then what happens is it shifts the cloud. It shifts the cloud, the, the electron cloud. And so the, the, we say that the atom is polarized because the center of the negative charge is here, whereas the center of the positive charge is there. So, that's, so no longer do the positives and negatives share the same center. So, this is, so we say this atom is polarized. But can you imagine if we put a strong enough electric field in here, like a really strong field, there would be a point where these valence electrons would just get ripped off of the uh, of the atom and it would fly over to the other plate and it would discharge the other plate and so um and so th this is not this that's called dielectric breakdown and so um even air even if there's only air in between the plates there'll be a point where you just get you build up so much uh, um potential that there'll be a spark that goes across you know that's a spark in fact we take advantage of that with a spark plug um, that's how we ignite the gas fuel mixture is we get the potential to be so great between the this, the two spots uh, between the the uh, the the two plates that there's a spark that goes across and it ignites the gasoline okay so this this is a, called the dielectric breakdown all right, and so the, the the strength of the electric field that each of these can handle is called the dielectric strength. So dielectric strength is actually an electric field. I'll say that again. The dielectric strength is actually an electric field, and it's um, I'm making it seem more simple than it actually is. It's it's actually. Um, like Teflon doesn't have a set dielectric strength. It's got it varies depending on the on the thickness of the Teflon and how it's arranged. If it's in thin layers or or what have you, but um, we say that air has a dielectric strength of three kilovolts per millimeter, and if if you put a stronger electric field than that, for air it will start to conduct electricity. It will actually um, break down and you'll get the capacitor that's that has the air in between will actually start to break down. That's why um, capacitors will tell you not just the capacitance. Written on every capacitor is the capacitance plus the maximum voltage you can put on it that you can safely put on it before you get breakdown. Hey let me just say one thing about electric fields before um, we go on and that is um, let's say we have an electric field here and um, let's say it's a uniform electric field. So it means if I put a positive test charge in this region, um, it would it's going to zip that way, and it it's going to zip that way with the same acceleration because it'll have the same force on it, whether it's here, here, or here, because the field's uniform. 
And um, so there's two ways to talk about the field here. The field could be, you could say that the electric field, I'm just going to make up a number now. Let's say the field is 200 newtons per coulomb. Okay, the way you interpret that is every coulomb of charge you put, say right here, it'll have 200 newtons of force on it for every coulomb of charge. So that's one way that we designate field. But another way we designate field is we can say that it's 200 volts per meter. And so um, a way to look at that is that if I, if I um, have a positive charge here, uh, um, and if I move it one meter this way, then, then it will gain a certain potential, the potential difference uh, I, I misspoke there. If I have, if so, if I move a charge from here or a point, let's let's not talk about charge. If we take off, like there's two points and they're a meter apart. Let's say this is a meter apart. If that's a meter apart, and if the electric field is 200 volts per meter, then if I go from from um, this position up up um, against the field to this position, this will be two. This is going to be 200 volts more than this. So that's what that means. So if you go against the field, you're going to gain 200 volts. It'll be 200 volts more if you go one meter. That's assuming that it's a uniform field. So both of these are the same. So you can, you can um, take volts per meter and change it to newtons per coulomb if you, um, if you do the right thing with the units. Okay? So what this is then saying is that... Um, if you put an electric field of 3,000 volts per millimeter between the plates of a capacitor, it's not going. It's going to break down, and it's not going to uh, be a capacitor anymore. It's going to actually allow the flow of electricity. Um, so mylar has. You even need to put. It it can withstand a, even a greater electric field, 600 kilovolts per millimeter, before it breaks down. So mylar is. It's good in that when you add it, when you when you put it between a capacitor, not only does the capacitance go up by 3.1 times, it goes up 3.1 times, but it also allows the electric field to go to go. Normally, you have air, like if you have an air capacitor, it goes from that electric field to this. This is the maximum it can withstand before it breaks down. Incidentally, a vacuum is really good at not breaking down in the field. So this is mu this is a much bigger number, but that's a perfect vacuum, and you you know you, there's there's no such thing really as a perfect vacuum in terms of um, there's always going to be a, a few particles in there, not a few, a lot of particles. So, but but like with air, you're, you're greatly improving the dielectric breakdown. Uh, point when you add mylar. Okay, so that's the dielectric strength. All right, that's what I wanted to tell you about dielectric strength. Thanks, bye.